If you've been around for any length of time, then you know that about a year ago, I left my full-time job as a software engineer in order to embark on a life of being a freelancer and working on my own products. So since it's been about a year since I left my job, I wanted to give an update and also reflect on what my main takeaways are from this first year working independently. I think this could be helpful to you if you're considering doing something similar and it's just another data point for you to consider. I hope at the very least this is interesting for those of you who've been following along and if you're considering doing something similar then I think it could be a helpful data point for you as you consider what your approach might be. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So a quick recap for those of you who may not have been around here. Last year on February 11th, I had my last day of work as a full-time software engineer. This is something I'd been thinking about doing for several years at this point, and I was very inspired by Daniel Vassallo and his small bets approach to self-employment, which made me feel like I could give this a shot. It also didn't hurt that at that point, the tech market was absolutely on fire. As I record this, it's January 2023, and things are very different. We're struggling a bit in tech, but at that point, the combination of my years of experience as an engineer, my savings, the small bets approach, and how strong the market was made me feel like it was the right time to try self-employment. I was pretty tired from the past three years of working at this particular job, not in a bad way, but I had left a lot of myself in this job. It had taken a lot of energy and I was ready to decompress for a little bit. I realized that having a break from work is something that is becoming increasingly rare for me. And so I decided to take the first few months kind of off, uh, still doing some work that I've been doing all along with the coding boot camp, but really trying to focus on just decompressing and seeing what the next step might be. And my plan was to get my first contract starting in June. That said, a few things happened that changed my plans. Number one is I had a $4,000 tax bill come due, which was my fault for not getting my withholding right the year prior, but that was a big unexpected expense that kind of shifted my perspective a bit. I wasn't expecting to have large unforeseen expenses necessarily. I was prepared for it, but it shifted the plans. Also, I had to go to the emergency room and here in the United States, going to any kind of doctor or healthcare can sometimes be really expensive. And I wasn't sure quite how much it was going to cost, but I figured it may get up to several thousand dollars. And so basically the choice I had with these things was to pay them out of the money I'd set aside for this self-employment experiment and decrease my runway or go ahead and find some contract work sooner than I thought. And so I decided to go ahead and find some contract work. I spent about three weeks looking for a contract gig in April and at the end of that time had two opportunities that were brought to me by recruiters and I ended up picking one with an NFT platform that was out in California. This was a great team and a great product and I really enjoyed working with these people. The drawback was that it was 40 hours a week or at least I was contracted for 40 hours a week for three months. And so the nature of that kind of work meant for me that I wouldn't have time to spend as much on my own stuff. So I committed to do this for the three months and decided to reassess when the time was up. The hard thing about this contract was that I was actually able to pick my own hours, but the client more or less had full-time expectations. And so even if I wasn't doing 40 hours a week, the client more or less expected me to be available during working hours. And so that made it hard for me to plan my weeks. And then in September, I got an offer through my network to take on an explicitly part-time contracting arrangement. So I ended up rolling off of the first client and started working with the second client and I'm still working with them. And it's been a great fit for my schedule. It's about 60 hours a month. And so it leaves me time to do some of my other work with the coding bootcamp and also time to pursue my own projects. At this point, I feel I'm pretty close to finding the ideal mix of paid contracting work, flexible work with the coding bootcamp and time spent on my own projects. So that brings us to my takeaways. What are my main takeaways from this year of self-employment? One of the biggest takeaways for me so far is that I'm actually questioning what my original dream was. So I've been very influenced and inspired over the years by indie hackers. And I always thought it would be really cool to have my own indie SaaS that was creating quote unquote passive income, even though 
working on a SaaS is not passive, but I always thought I wanted to build SaaS products and try to sell those. But the reality of this kind of independent freelancer lifestyle is that even with just one paid client part-time, I've already kind of achieved my goal, which I realized was actually to have a lot more freedom and flexibility, but still be able to pay my bills. And so given that I already really like my current lifestyle, I've been trying to figure out, do I actually want to put in the effort to build a SaaS? And I like the idea of doing it, but I'm not sure that I'm actually going to like it in practice. And I found in my life that there's quite a few things like this that sound cool, but in practice, once you start actually doing them are not as great as you thought. The first thing that comes to mind for me from about 10 years ago was being a college tennis player. I grew up playing tennis as a junior and had a local college team that I really adored and looked up to this program, thought it would be fun to be a college tennis player. But once I got there, the reality of doing it day in and day out was not as glamorous as it appeared. And I'm basically having a similar experience with doing SaaS. Uh, I haven't actually started building anything, but thinking about spending the time and effort and energy to do it, given that I already basically am living the life that I want to be living, is tough. And so it may be the case that I actually like what I'm doing right now and I don't end up building a SaaS, but I'm wrestling with that and I don't really have any clear answers right now, but that's been a big takeaway from this experience for me. More positively, probably my biggest takeaway in general is that I'm absolutely certain that I want to continue working for myself. The freedom, the flexibility, the autonomy have been great. I don't think they're ultimately fulfilling, but in terms of having more of those baked into my working life, it's been a big success and a big win in my book. And so I want to continue trying to sustain this independent lifestyle for as long as I can. Along with that, it'd be really hard for me to imagine going back to a 40 hour a week job or feeling chained to a desk. Even now, if I have a lot of freelancing hours to make up, the idea of just having to be at my desk and kind of be dialed in for a really long period of time the feeling of having something that I have to get done and have to spend a ton of time on is not super fun for me. And so I think the extent to which I can avoid that kind of thing is going to be great. Uh, I like work that I can do uh, flexibly at my own convenience. And I really don't like the feeling of having to put a certain amount of time in, even though that is kind of the nature of contracting to a certain degree. But I'm going to try to avoid that uh, as much as I can. Another takeaway from this year is that I'm still figuring out how to balance Slack in my schedule with activity. So my perfect day basically is where I have some work that I do in the morning and then basically have the rest of the day open. And so I'm still trying to figure out how to arrange my schedule and my activities such that my days end up looking more and more like that. I mentioned that I have quite a few different things going on. So I have work with this coding bootcamp. I have paid work with my clients. I have YouTube, of course. I have a podcast and I have a few other things going on. I took a course at our local community college last fall. And so I've been trying to figure out what my ideal mix of things is. And when I first started this, because I was so inspired by Daniel Vasallo, I thought, yeah, I'll have a portfolio of bets. I'll have a lot of different things going on. But the reality of doing that is that it's starting to get a little bit old for me. I think I would like to streamline and consolidate, maybe have one or two big things I'm working on instead of a bunch of different little things. And so I'm trying to figure out how to do that. But that's been another big takeaway from this first year is that spinning a bunch of plates in practice has not been quite as fun as I thought it would be. And the last big takeaway for me is that I've realized that this life is a little bit lonely if you don't know people that are doing a similar thing. And I've also realized that a lot of the people that I look up to and have read in terms of personal finance and doing this small bets thing seem to essentially suggest that the whole purpose of being self-employed is to continue being self-employed. If you follow Daniel Vassallo, you'll basically see that. And it comes up in a lot of his thoughts and tweets and philosophy. And I think uh, that's a great goal for him, but I've realized for myself that it's going to be important for me to connect my individual efforts to a larger purpose. And so doing what I've done this first year, it's been fun. It's been great. There's been a lot of autonomy, but I feel disconnected from kind of a larger life vision. And I don't think I want my life vision to be keep being self-employed at all costs. So I'm still thinking through that, don't have very many conclusions, but I am thinking about this idea of meaning in work. And I think that's tough. It's tough for a lot of people to find and even for the people that find it, sometimes other people take advantage of that. So it's tricky, but it is something that I'm thinking about. So to wrap up, 
given my experience, would I recommend this? I'd say based on this first year, absolutely. If you're the kind of person that wants more autonomy, that doesn't want to spend your life energy building someone else's company, that wants to try freelancing, that is interested in entrepreneurship, I think this is definitely something worth trying. Even if you're not interested in any of those things, I think just the flexibility and the lifestyle is really compelling. Uh, for example, I had a family member undergo a big operation a few weeks ago, and I was able to take the time to be with them, and I didn't have to worry about paid time off or coordinating my work with a ton of other people or the expectations that a full-time employer might have. And that has been really wonderful. I've talked in the past about how this blog post, The Tail End, from Tim Urban was also a big inspiration for doing this. And so having the time and the attention to dedicate to family and close friends has also been something uh, that's been great. And I highly recommend that. So on the whole, I'd say yes, I recommend giving this a shot. Of course, do your planning. Uh, be relatively conservative. Don't take a ton of risk. But I found that there are ways of doing this, and I think it's been great. So if you're at all inclined to this, I'd say go for it. So that's all I've got for you. I know people have had questions about this in the past. So if this particular video inspires any questions in you, then leave them for me in the comments and I'll respond. I love talking about this. I think it's super interesting, and I hope it's been interesting and helpful for you. As a reminder, I make videos about software engineering and self-employment. So if this has been interesting, then consider sticking around. Regardless, thanks for watching to the end. Remember, stay hungry, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.